this is Christina. Welcome to my channel. And today I want to do another video on fan making, but this time I want to talk about how to make a fan out of a picture that you've printed out. Um, there are fans you can find online where the, they have not ever been folded like this one. They've been, they've been created as a beautiful piece of art ready to put on a fan, but they were never put on a fan. And those help give us a good idea of the size and the shape that an original was, but it doesn't help us figure out how to fold it. And, and when I was making this fan last time, I noticed that there were, I think there were about 14 sticks on this one. Yeah, there's 14 sticks on this one. And then and with these two last ones, that makes 16, which is the perfect number if you want to figure out where your folds are simply by continually folding the fan in half, in half, in half, in half. And that can get you very even folds. So I'm going to show you how to do that. To get something like this out of a picture but first what I want to do is I want to create a template that is perfectly suited for these fans that I've been using I actually found I found a black one yesterday after I after I painted one black I found one that came in it so I'm gonna use that today and I'm going to be making the template based on this fan and then we're going to be applying it to this picture now, the first thing is, um, I mentioned in my, my previous video on fan making that these are four and a half inches, um, the panel is, and then they're about, about 17 long. And the other thing I figured out is that that's a circle. That's, if you measure from about here to the end, you're looking at about eight and a half inches. So we're gonna use those two measurements to make ourselves a template. And uh, there's going to be a little bit of math, but don't worry, not too much. And uh, I used to be a math tutor actually, so I'll try to make it extra simple. So uh, let's get started on that. All right, so here I've got my piece of paper and in order to make it 11 by 17, which is the tabloid size, that we're ultimately going to print it out on, uh, I simply tape together two regular eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, just like this, taped right down the middle, and that will make it so we can create ourselves a template at home. Another thing I've done is I've drawn a very faint line right across the bottom here. I'll darken that up as we go along to show you. We're gonna start a little bit off the bottom, just so um, you'll see when I cut the template, that will make things a little easier to have a little bit of that at the bottom. So this should be right lined up. I think you can see everything. Okay, so just to show you, I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of this line at the bottom. This is gonna be my center or my bottom line. Okay. So there we are. And the other nice thing is we have a ready-made center, so we don't have to fold it or measure it or figure that out right here as our center. Okay, so um, we want the total of the fan size to be as big as possible, which is half of 17, <laughs> and that number is eight and a half. Okay. So when we measure, we're going to measure out eight and a half, uh, but we also need to measure our inner circle and we want the total of, we want the total size of the fan to be four and a half inches. So eight and a half minus four and a half is four. All right. So we'll measure out four inches from the center and then we'll measure out eight and a half and that will give us the points we want. So. I mean, you can really start wherever you want. I like to start in the middle. So I probably should do it like this, because then you can see from zero. Okay, so 
starting at zero, our zero point. We're going to go up. We're going to mark a point at four. And then we're going to mark a point at eight and a half. And we're making fans, so we're going to keep doing that at various points, always measuring from our, our origin, our center point there. So four, eight and a half. And here, you know what I'll do is I'll just kind of show you a couple kind of close to each other. And I think you get the idea. We are going to create, oh, whoops, that one's not right. That's why we do a template. <laughs> do it on here and not on the picture that you printed out. Four, eight and a half. And the more you do of these, of course, the more accurate you'll get. But I'm going to go through and finish this off camera. But to show you the idea is we're going to be creating this lovely arc, which will define the edges of our fan. So we have our fan arc drawn like this. And if we wanted a full half circle, this would be perfect. I've seen some uh, Victorian fans, Edwardian fans that um, do have this this complete circle, the fan can open all the way up out like this. Now for the 18th century fans, which is most of what I do fans for, um, you'll notice on these ones that have been unpleated, they don't extend all the way down. There's a little bit, there's a little bit there. Maybe not quite an inch. And then this one, we have even more. We have maybe an inch and a half. So there's a little bit of play there. I'm going to say uh, based on the picture that you're printing out, you may or may not want the edges to show. And so you are welcome to play with your template. But what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go with, let's just do an inch for now. So right over here, I'm going to measure an inch. And when I say this, let me explain. This is actually how it's how it's radiating out from the side. And you do want to do that from the center point. At first I was doing it like this, but that is not correct. You will you'll end up with a wonky, a wonky edge there. So you want to do it right out to that point that's an inch up. And another thing when we create the folding pattern, because of how we're gonna do it, we are gonna lose maybe about half an inch on one of the edges. So keep in mind one of your edges, you will lose half an inch. So you don't want to, like if you did two inches, you're gonna lose a little bit more than that on one of the sides. So I don't wanna go up too much. I just wanna have a very gentle curve right here, which you could change, you can alter it. So by doing one inch, it makes it so I can go in and um, so when I say one inch or two inches, if I was gonna make it two inches up from, remember this is our, our baseline and measuring up two inches, you could do this. Like maybe you have a picture where you don't, you don't have anything going on down here. Um, but I'm also gonna give you a tip on how to remedy that. And maybe you wanna hide the fact that you don't have anything going on down here, you could draw your line there instead. Or even some of them are very, very narrow fans. You could even do, you could even do steeper. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut, these are my points. I'm going to cut this out. I'm not going to cut into it. I'm going to cut it out so that I have a template to use. All right, I've got my template neatly cut out um, like this. And what we're gonna use that for is to center it on our image and get it where we want it. And we also, I recommend the first time, uh, practice folding this. So we will do that next first. And I've already got it over an image that I've printed out. This is 
Uh, the March to Valley Forge, December 19, 1777, was actually painted in 1883 by William B. Trego. And I have an event coming up called Valley Forge, and I just thought it would be neat um, to uh, do this image. Um, if you're trying to be uh, true to your era, you may want to choose artwork that is um, maybe from the year or a few years before uh, you were portraying. It was common to have art on your fan that depicted a recent battle or a recent event. For example, in 1783, I think it was uh, the first hot air balloon um, went up and that was a big sensation. There were a lot of fans that had hot air balloons on them. But so this one we have, uh, we've got Washington right here. We've got his men looking rather ragged and I'm going to try to center this. I wanted to show you a little trick I did, which was <laughs> I went through because I thought I, d I don't know how far down here the fan is going to extend. So when I uh, was cleaning this up in paint, I, I copied the very, very um, little bottom piece and I just I just copied it down a few times and I stretched it down here. I don't think we're going to see any of this, but just in case we do, I wanted that to be there. Uh, so that's what happened there. Right over here, you can see the artist's signature, I think. Is that grass or is that his signature? I'm not sure. <laughs> but I made sure there was just one of that. It would be neat if we can get that in here. Okay. Yeah, see, it's helpful that I did this because that's probably going to show. So let's see. Do I like this? So if, like, let's say I wanted... Let's say I wanted more of the top for some reason, which I don't on this one, but let's say I did. You would just move this up and like this. Make sure you're just about, since you have both your pieces, you can line it up and say, okay, I want it there. Like that. So I'm going to keep mine like this. And I'm going to get out a pencil and very carefully go through and trace around like this. And then I'm going to cut that piece out. Okay, so I have my fan image all cut out according to my template. And I have gone around the edges in this lovely gold sharpie right around there and there very optimistically <laughs> because if I have to trim anything down I'll have to redo it but we also do it on the back and it's maybe a touch easier to do before it's folded but you can also do it after it's folded especially if you think you're going to have to trim some of it off I would just wait and then I also went through with my colored pencils and cleaned up um, especially the parts where it's dark against light it looks a little bit pixelated and I don't want it to look printed I want it to look like it was painted on there I guess if you're an amazing painter um, you could uh, fix it up with paints um, I do it with colored pencils so I just kind of cleaned up their hats there got some little horses ears sticking up here and uh, I think I used this on some of our bayonets or um, I guess rifle or musket uh, barrels there and then I went through and um, kind of made these the leaves these beautiful leaves on the trees just kind of pop with gold all right so the next thing we're going to do now that our fan is prepared is we're going to fold it so. okay now, uh, I have done this on a practice one before, and uh, in order to get um, the front fan stick here and the back fan stick there, you are going to want to make your first fold in the center, since we're doing, we're going to do halves, and we're going to start with the center. You're going to want to fold them in on itself, this right sides together. It's kind of an easy way to remember it. So, let's see, I'm going to try to line that up very, very good. And you want to make sure this line up here matches itself as perfectly as possible. Okay. Our first very nice fold. Okay. Now we want to keep doing that where we're doing right sides together. 
We want to line this up exactly at the center for our quarter fold. And again, with this part, as even as possible, while being as true as possible to this line that we've already folded. And while I'm doing this, I wanted to talk a little bit about bands for men. Now, I have not seen a lot of evidence um, about men having fans. I've seen some some pictures, uh, mainly where the man has like a just a black, kind of a plain black fan on dark sticks, um, which would be very cool actually if a man wanted a fan. You could do that. You can maybe have your initials on it. I'm gonna fold this to here now. Um, but yeah, that that would be very nice. And another thought about men with fans, if you feel that if you're a man and you think, oh, fans are for girls, um, and maybe you don't want to be seen fanning yourself with a fan, uh, consider this. There is often a lady nearby <laughs> who perhaps has forgotten a fan. Maybe you're at a dance, maybe you're at some kind of outdoor event, and there is a lady and you notice that she needs to be fanned. How chivalrous would it be <laughs> if you were to uh, pull out a very manly fan so that lady could fan herself with it. That would be wonderful. Uh, also, I liked this picture because if you're a guy and you wanted a manly fan, uh, you know, Valley Forge and George Washington, very manly. You could pull this out and I don't think anyone would, would think that's strange. So I'm just going to keep folding here. And again, trying to line just a little tip is that I can see the fold there and I can see the fold here. And then the next most important thing is that this lines up. So you don't really have to worry too much about looking at that. Just make sure these two folds are sitting on top of each other and that it's this top edge is even. That's what's important. As close as possible. Okay. Now I'm going to try to skip ahead a little bit just so I can show you the next thing. So this is, we want to have it so that there are 16 sections, I believe. Let's see. Yes, so that would be eight sections on a side. So I'm saying that one, two, that's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight to the center. Okay. So let me do one more and then I'm going to show you. Let's see, where's my fold? Right there. Okay. Now I'm going to pretend, we're going to pretend <laughs> like I did all of these. I'm going to show you from the back. Pretend like I did all of these, but they're going to be, these ones are complete. This is as small as you're going to get with the front folds. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to fold um, the back ones, but in order to do that, we are simply for each section going to bring these edges together. Okay, so that's just going to be like this. Easier in a lot of ways. Okay. And then just bring these two together. Uh, and I like to kind of do that and then slip my hand under and nail go through okay so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish up this pleating so I can show you okay so my fan is all folded we've got uh, uh, what I call the up bumps and we've got the down bumps um, so that's all folded, and I just wanted to show you how neatly it fits over an original because I am suspecting that they may have used this method of folding because it's very straightforward. Actually, it was neat the other day. I had it tucked in like this. It was a really cool thing I wanted to show. It's pretty much exactly the same. <laughs> so... I'm suspecting that they may have folded their fans like this because it's hard to get those little exact folds. The, the modern ones have machines do it. Um, I think I might have missed one. Or maybe I have extra. Um, 
let's see. But because of the way, oh, I didn't have that one out. Okay, so because of the way that we folded it, we actually end up, see if this one's gonna go behind that stick. Okay, over on this side though, you're actually ending up with one extra skinny little panel, which is very unfortunate in this case because that's the one that has the artist's signature. Oh no. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna cut that off. I'm a little sad, but it's okay. Maybe better planning on my part was called for, but I didn't quite realize that would happen. Another thing is that this will be hidden behind this one. So um, something to keep in mind when you're planning it is that you are going to lose these two end ones. This one because it will be covered and this one because you're just going to chop it off like that. Um, I do, when I remember, I usually remember, um, once I'm done with the fans, I go in on the back part, usually right here. I don't think I did it on this one. I didn't. I need to. Usually I'll go in and I'll actually write in little letters, I'll write where the fan came from, is it in a certain museum, is there an accession number, and I'll basically document my fan. So I highly recommend doing that. So even though you're going to lose the artist's signature, um, I, will, I will indicate on the fan itself where this came from, in case someone's curious. Okay, so at this point... I am ready to attach this to its sticks and I have another video if you haven't seen it I recommend that it's very long <laughs> where I show how to do the sticks and how to attach everything to the stick so I won't show that again um, but I'm gonna go ahead and go do that part next okay I know I said I wouldn't show the attachment but this is something I forgot to show in the other video so when we go to put on the first stick I did the part where I laid it against it, I trace it, and I cut it out. This is the perfect time to flip it over and do that extra bit of gold right there. So that's a step I just did and realized I forgot to show you before. Um, you'll ultimately end up doing a similar thing on this side when you go to put the last stick on. You'll draw your line, you'll cut it, and then you can go through with your gold pen and draw that in along that edge that you'll now have. All right, my fan is done. Here it is. I think it looks pretty good. Here we go. My my top edge was actually perfectly even. Uh, no problems whatsoever. I uh, should have checked it before I started. Um, but there you go. I also uh, I spent a lot of Saturday painting some sticks black for a morning fan I made that I show in another video. And then I went to Daiso yesterday and they just sold black sticks there so <laughs> oh no I just painted these sticks but um so this one was a lot easier to put together I put it together really quick um and I've got as I was saying if you can see my documentation uh for the name of the artwork and the author and I wish um I should look up where it's at maybe put that there which museum it's at uh, and I also I made a mistake I'm going to show you um, I was still in the mindset of the other fans that I was making off originals where I had to cut a portion off um, when I stuck it on. I actually did not need to do that on this, so I cut it and then <laughs> had to glue it back on. So uh, I am definitely uh, not perfect. Your fans don't need to be perfect um, either. And my New Year's resolution this year is actually to do new things badly um, because it's better to at least have tried something new and um, <laughs> you'll see some examples of that in my other videos but there you go and uh, i think that's all for now um until i think of something else so uh yeah thank you for joining me and have a wonderful day